In today's video, we look over the Pac-Man Gambit, which, in all honesty, is a gambit that you should never play, unless maybe you're in Bullet. Maybe in Bullet it would work, but even then I don't recommend it. Let's take a look. It's a gambit for white against the move of E5, E4, E5, in which case we're playing Knight F3, Knight C6. So far, everything looks normal, right? I mean, talk about a classical chess position, but then we play this move of B4, reaching the Pac-Man wing gambit, and uh, everyone's wondering what on earth we're doing including ourselves right now the reason i think this is so bad is is not because this knight can capture it's developed but because an undeveloped piece can capture it right off notice in this position white's light squared bishop is on f1 some of you may be wondering why does this have anything to do with the bishop capturing the pawn well let's go back the Pac-Man Gambit is basically an Evans Gambit, but worse. Because the Evans Gambit, we play this move of Bishop C4. We wait for their Bishop to move, and then we play the move of B4. And if the Bishop takes, notice now, all of Black's pieces are the exact same. But instead of having a Bishop on F1, our Bishop is on C4. And this is a huge benefit in our position. Eyeing F7, which by the way is the weakest pawn in chess, because only the King defends it. And on top of that... We are one move away from castling kingside. We can castle the next move if we want to. Okay. Now, that said, the, the main idea here is to play c3 and start looking at d4 and really breaking this game open. But having this bishop on c4 is a huge plus. And I wanted to include this video on the channel, not so much just because of the, the you know, the Pac-Man Gambit, but more so to show an idea, which I think can transfer to other kinds of positions as well. Let's go back to this move of knight c6, right? Now, we could play b4, but then the bishop just takes right away. A better idea here is to play the Evans gambit, if you like these kind of positions. We should make a move, wait for their bishop to move, and then play the move of b4. Whether this bishop is on c5, d6, e7, or f8, the bishop is going to capture that pawn, right? That's the best move, at least. I mean, knight takes works as well, but, you know, just looking at the bishop, if the bishop's here or here, in either case, the bishop's going to take. So we might as well let the bishop move, waste some time, and then take. Because if you think about it, this move is kind of pointless, right, in a sense, right? Because after it moves, it's just going to take the pawn, right? So you're moving, and then you're taking a pawn. That's what we should force the opponent to do. Let's go back, right, to the starting position and look at this from the black perspective against the queen's gambit. Okay, we have d4, we have d5, we have c4 with the queen's gambit. Let's just say we play a slav here. Okay, there's a lot of options. We just keep developing. Now notice here, if we take this pawn right away, the bishop captures right back. And we do not have a pawn on e6, right? Because we just took and the bishop was immediately able to capture back, right? But going back, if we make a developing move, there's a lot of moves we could play here. e6 is one of them. And then we wait for the bishop to move we can then capture, and by doing so, we made white waste time. Now, all that said, was was bishop d3 a bad move? No, at some point you have to play it, right? I mean, going back, right, if we have e3 and we, you know, okay, we play a move like e6, there's a lot of development here. And what you're gonna see top players doing, they are not gonna take this pawn until white ends up moving that bishop because that's gonna give us an extra tempo in the game. The opening is all about developing quick and fast. And, um, okay, I mean, white, white can do what they want. They can keep kind of moving pieces around, doing whatever. We're going to keep developing too, right? Bring the bishop out. Castle, you know, we can look at tucking the knight. We can look at a6. We can look at, you know, just continuing to develop and, and you know, kind of improving our pieces. And then the moment that this bishop moves, we then take. Why would we take right away, right, where the bishop can just take and when we have the option of letting the opponent move that piece, right? And then make a capture, right? All that said, white gets nothing, no kind of benefit benefit from doing that. And um, again, this is not a mistake of whites to play bishop d3. This is literally the stockfish move, okay? It's not the best idea for white here to play a move like c5 or to take on d5. White at some point does need to develop their pieces. But as black, we're not going to take this pawn be because, by the way, there's only one piece defending it. Okay, it's different. It's different in some positions. If you got two pawns and you got a knight and you got all these pieces defending something. But in this case, the bishop is the lone defender of this pawn. Right? So we might as well wait till the bishop moves to one of these two squares, then capture, 
and we get that extra tempo. If you have any questions about this general idea, let me know. And if you want to play the Pac-Man Gambit, but better, the Pac-Man Gambit better, well, the answer is the Evans Gambit. And I will leave a link to the Evans Gambit and how to play it properly down below. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And on top of that, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the chess content coming your way. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters of the month of December in 2023. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're interested in becoming a patron, we have a link down below, in which case you will see all of the benefits that you gain by becoming a member. I hope to see you join the family. All that said, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.